Jalen Petrie was a second round pick for the Texans in 2021, and as a prospect, he had some of the best and most entertaining film of anyone from his draft class, but he's undersized for his safety, so there were questions about whether or not his physical play style would translate to the NFL, and I think his tape from last year answered that question with a resounding yes. Before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow us on all of our social medias. You can find the links to those in the description below. Petrie was one of the most productive safeties in the NFL as a rookie. He had five interceptions and four pass breakups, and he ranked fifth with 31 stops, and a stop is a tackle that results in an unsuccessful play for the offense. He's kind of a throwback player, one of the hardest hitting safeties in the league, and he pairs that with incredible instincts and reaction time, so he's someone that the quarterback has to be aware of if he's throwing over the middle. First play, Houston's in cover three, and the Jags are running a bow concept where you've got a hitch underneath to hold the middle hook defender, and then you wrap a dig route behind it. The linebacker slides over to cover the hitch. Petrie recognizes the in-breaking route over the top, and he makes a diving interception. Right here, the Dolphins are motioning into four by one, and they're running a variation of bow with two dig routes over the top of the hitch. Again, the hitch holds this underneath defender and creates space for Tyreek Hill, but Petrie reacts quickly, instantly closes in, and lays a huge hit to break up the pass. On this play, the corner on the backside is playing with some cushion, so Dak's gonna try to hit this quick slant, but Petrie sees there's no immediate threat from the passing strength, so he breaks on the throw. Great job landing a clean hit to knock the ball loose without drawing a penalty. Another one from the Cowboys game, it's third and 10, and the Texans are playing cover six, which is cover two to the weak side and cover four to the passing strength. And Dallas is just running four deep curls. The outside corner in cover two would just be the flat defender, but since it's quarters to the strong side, he's got the number one receiver in man coverage if he releases vertically. The hook defender gets depth and covers the third receiver, so Petrie's responsible for the number two running down the seam, and he's so explosive closing that space, gets his hand in the passing window and forces an incompletion. And then one more against the Colts. Petrie actually gets a penalty here. Probably agree with that call, but it wasn't a dirty hit or anything. So Matt Ryan wants to hit this backside dig, but he's got to wait for the route to develop so he can get it behind the Mike linebacker. And you can see he's reading the left side of the field at first, but when he moves his eyes to the right and steps up in the pocket, that alerts Petrie that he's trying to hit the backside dig. Petrie tries to time this up and get there under control. He's going like 30% speed, doesn't lead with the helmet, but he ends up getting called for a penalty. There are two areas for improvement in pass coverage. The first is defending smash concepts as a split safety. So the Texans under Lovey Smith ran a lot of cover two and smash is one of the most consistently effective cover two beaters. I use smash as a catch all phrase for any two man high low concept to the sideline. So right here, you've got the running back on an underneath route that occupies the flat defender and then a corner route into this void between the flat defender and the safety. Now there's a million different ways to defend smash out of too high. Sometimes you'll have the corner sink to the midpoint and try to deny this whole shot, but he stays up on the flat. The hook defender has to maintain inside leverage on the corner route because there's no help over the middle and Petrie just gets way too much depth here. He needs to break his pedal and deny this outside break. And then another example against Dallas, Petrie's a lot quicker breaking on this whole shot, but he loses outside leverage and he isn't able to get over in time. So that's the first thing, he just needs to be more consistent getting proper depth and protecting the sideline from split safety. The second is covering deep crossing routes out of single high. Now evaluating safety play is a little dicey because none of us know exactly what the call is or how they're being coached to play it. But if we look at this example from week 13, the Browns are running two deep crossers with Amari Cooper converting his into a post corner. Usually the way you want to play this as a single high safety is to pick up the underneath route and leave the deeper route to the corner. This is a great example from Kevin Byard against a similar concept. You can see he cuts the deep over and gives the post to the corner. But going back to this play against Cleveland, Petrie continues to get depth and brackets the post, but Cooper just runs away from the coverage and you've got a corner trying to cover an in-breaking route with outside leverage and no help over the middle. And then another one against Miami, they've got Hill running a wheel route from the wing to create a vertical thread on the left side. And then you've got an over and a corner route to the right. And there's no reason for Petrie to be playing this over the top because he isn't gonna be able to affect the corner route and he leaves the over wide open. So in coverage, Jalen Petrie is a playmaker. As long as he knows where he's supposed to be, he's an absolute force patrolling the middle of the field. There's just a few things he needs to clean up as far as defending certain route concepts. But you watch him defend the run, it's honestly crazy to me that he weighs under 200 pounds. He's the epitome of punching above your weight class. Like I said, he ranked fifth among safeties in total stops and his 5.4% run stop rate was 10th league wide. And because Petrie's such a high impact run defender, the Texans 
Texans were able to play him all over the field. On this play, the Jags are running counter with the center and guard pulling. The center's a little bit off balance, so Petrie just sends him into another dimension. Right here, the Bears are running a jet sweep. Petrie swipes away this block from Cole Komet and makes the tackle. And then on this play, he rotates down into the box and stacks and sheds Gerald Everett. And it's just incredible the way a player of his size is able to get off of blocks like a linebacker. So for a player that can shed blocks and get this many tackles, it doesn't seem like he should have a 38.5 run defense grade, but Petrie had one of the worst tackling seasons in NFL history. He had a 20.3% missed tackle rate, which was the worst among NFL safeties, and he missed 36 tackles in total, and no other safety in PFF's database, which goes back to 2006, has ever missed 30 tackles in a season. So a lot of times missed tackles are something you can overlook to a certain extent, especially when it's someone who's flying into the backfield, making a bunch of plays behind the line of scrimmage. If you miss a few tackles, but you're slowing down the ball carrier and letting someone else finish, that's fine, you can live with that. But Petrie just wasn't a reliable tackler as the last line of defense. He leaves his feet a lot as a tackler, which you can get away with in the backfield, but in open space, he's got to tone down the aggressiveness a little bit. And there were a lot of times he over pursued and took a bad angle or he'd try to go low and dive at the feet. So that's the biggest thing he needs to fix heading into next year. There's some nitpicky zone coverage stuff to work on, but becoming a more reliable tackler should be number one on the offseason agenda. If he can become just an average tackler and take a more conservative approach when he's the last line of defense, there's no reason Jalen Petrie can't be a top 10 safety in year two. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.